Dear reader, listener, we're getting close to the end here. We are on week 33. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you're beginning this audio version of Taught on week 33, I would advise going back to listen to weeks 1 through 32 and the foreword and prologue. All of these are in order in the playlist and can be accessed on the YouTube channel Taught at Taught2022. This character's journal will make much more sense if you start at her beginning. Thanks for reading, listening. Taught, week 33. Saturday, April 8th, 2017, 6.30 a.m. I feel broken now, and that might not be all bad. I mean, I've had some pretty rotten things happen in life, and I have come back from them. But I updated my resume, and as impressive as it looks, I don't feel good about it because I know it's all smoke and mirrors. While it has only been a few days since all the Adam stuff happened, I know something irreversible has happened. I lost most of my investments in the stock market, and I see it for the elite gambling organization for the rich that it is. I know the final investments are shaky and likely will never yield any return that I personally will see. The exception is Lewis. I am living for that daily hug as much as he is right now. That little shit may have eaten every one of my literary greats Lego characters, but I'd give any amount of Edgar Allan Poe and William Shakespeare action figures to have him in my life for the rest of my life. And that's the problem. I want to save him from an uncertain future, one that's being crafted from the abuse he suffers daily. But I have to hope that whatever little bit of love I can give him now will be enough for later. Then I look at my family and how little they get of me. We are all sacrificing for a system that is just fine consuming us. And I'm the one choosing it. Yeah, I get paid, but my cost is greater than I ever realized. My family's losing the best pieces of me and the society that is benefiting from them doesn't care that I can't keep replenishing them. Continuing to invest at this level can only end in bankruptcy. Sometimes you have to know when to pull out. Tuesday, April 11th, 2017, 5 p.m. Time is a good healer. The days are getting easier since the whole Adam thing. I think it's easier because no one knows about it, except me, Derek, and Anita. Now I can watch the rest of the school run the way it always has, even though I can't be a part of it. I can only observe and wait until my time is up. Everything seems trite and meaningless, like an episode of Power Rangers. It's all mildly entertaining, but there's no substance, at least for me. Removing myself from school makes my connection to home stronger, and that is my safe space. It's so strange to have Paulo home all the time now. It's only been two days, but it's still strange. He's home and doesn't have to leave when I get home. We had dinner together and watched three episodes of Parks and Rec last night. Tonight, I didn't have to rush to get home, and I'm prepped and ready for tomorrow, which means I don't have to go in super early. It feels a bit like vacation, but we're both still working. I love it, and so does Mimi. She was thrilled to have two adults to fawn over her until her 7.30 bedtime. It feels like we're a real family. Friday, April 14th, 2017, 5 p.m. Amy had her baby this morning, 3.48 a.m. A bouncing baby girl, Chloe Elizabeth, eight pounds, one ounce. Mother and child are reportedly doing well. Since putting the donation envelope out, we have collected an incredible amount of money for her because we all know what a shitty leave system we have, and most of us have been victimized by it one way or another at some point. I donated $200, the price of two substitutes. It even looks as if she has enough money to take all of her maternity leave if she wants to use it that way. Whatever she decides to do, at least now she has options. And for a change, I am very pleased with my school family. And speaking of people I am pleased with, Kelly and I are having a slumber party at a hotel tomorrow. I am so excited. She invited herself to another sleepover at my place, and I reminded her that Paulo's home all the time now. 
Then she suggested the hotel. We both agreed to one bottle of wine to share and no taco pizza or pretzel M&Ms. We're going to have a healthy dinner and semi-healthy snacks. Maybe. Anyway, I can't wait. I told all of my classes today that I would be, they would be the final recipients of my extraordinary teaching abilities at this middle school. And I was touched at the number of kids that were genuinely sad they would not be able to come back and visit me or that their younger siblings would not have me. I was not prepared for Megan's reaction though. She cried. She nearly gave me the gnashing of teeth and writhing in agony that I had wanted from my colleagues. I'm going to have to do something nice for that kid before I leave. I'm kind of hard on her because she seems to be finding trouble more easily these days. She's headed off to high school next year, and I'm worried about the types of trouble she may seek out there. I actually threatened to not let her be my aide this quarter if she didn't get her crap together. That was after she was in ISS for three days for taking a smoothie she had made in fax class to the tech teacher complete with some of her own saliva. She was kind enough to video herself doing that and post it. Uh, anyway, so this big reaction was unexpected. Kids, who can predict what they'll do? Perhaps this is also a good reminder that they're not all atoms, and I need that desperately right now.